Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the BX Factor Live Profiles in Entrepreneurship. We're happy to have Teresa Casper Tibbet with us today from New Star Real Estate Strategies. We're going to have a great discussion. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the VX Factor Live, Profiles in Entrepreneurship. Teresa, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Well, thank you for having me, Mark. Absolutely. So, New Star Real Estate Strategies, we've had an opportunity to meet you and your partner, Rosanna, and Roro, as yes. we like to call her. <laughs> um, and we've had a lot of great discussions, and I think what you guys do is just so unique. So, to get started, why don't... You just give our audience a little bit of your background and maybe just, you know, like a, a brief intro to what New Star Real Estate Strategies does. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for having me on the show. Sure. Um, Rosanna and I come from uh, kind of a long history of tenant representation. Um, we've represented really big name companies. If, if I told you any one of them, you'd recognize them instantly. Um, we have about 35 years of combined experience. Um, and she and I both have done a variety of things in commercial real estate. What we're trying to achieve here with New Star Real Estate Strategies is to take all of that knowledge that we've gained at larger uh, enterprise level companies and deliver that service to small to medium sized businesses. Um, those businesses are usually kind of left out of that process and we're trying to bring high level quality service to those tenants. Uh, particularly with uh, analytics and economics. I have an economics background. Oh, excuse me. Um, I have an economics background and a GIS background. So mm -hmm. we try to incorporate that into what we're doing for our clients. That's awesome. And I think that's one of the things that's really unique about your partnership and what you guys can provide. I mean, we've, we've talked a little bit about a couple of projects that you've worked on and how that data and then the analytic portion of reviewing that data has made a huge difference for people and even actually made them realize that they shouldn't do right. a project, right. which sometimes is even more valuable than, you know, than making a project work. Right. Absolutely. We, we love to tell people no when it's not, a, when it's not appropriate because they know that we're, we, we've analyzed all the data and we're looking at that and we're telling them something based off of reason. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, I, I have an appraisal background, so we kind of approach every project that's brought to us through those lenses. Let's say that you, Mark, you have a property and you're, you're about to open it up to the world and, and do leasing on it. You're bringing this asset to me. You are delivering to me something you've put your blood, sweat, and tears into. So when you give us that opportunity to work with you, we take that into consideration. It's not just a job for us. We see everything that has, every client that comes to us, we see all of the work they've put behind that. So we want to protect that with good data. Mm -hmm. Things are changing so quickly in commercial real estate. The DFW area is exploding, as you know, and, and that growth is absolutely not going to stop. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, location and analytics are going to become even more important. So we use Esri, which is the gold standard for um, data analytics in our industry. And um, then we use some game theory analysis and economic theory behind that to um, analyze, and it's pretty much anything, mostly tenant rep, but mm -hmm. we'll do asset management. Um, we've worked with developers and consulting, um, just a variety of different things. Mm -hmm. So what are, let's just take a, kind of a theoretical situation. So there's a, maybe it's a new, mm -hmm. new development opportunity. Right. And someone wants to come in and invest money in that project mm -hmm. um, based on location and um, historical data, maybe about, you know, what's gone on in that area around that specific location. Those are right. some of the things you look at to determine whether it's viable for them for Absolutely. like the amount of investment they're looking to make. And, Absolutely. And yeah. 
So let's just take one case that's happened frequently. <coughs> we get a lot of developers that come in looking to build multifamily because that is a big area of development mm -hmm. and investment in the D well in the United States, period, mm -hmm. but particularly in the DFW area. So when I have a developer come to me, for instance, they want to know, okay, I'm about to put down $12, $20 million in cash to mm -hmm. build this. Does it make sense to do that? Is there the demand? So what we do is we take out any anything that the U.S. Census Bureau collects in that data, we take a look at that and we, we use proprietary methods to analyze if there is enough demand for, like, let's say, multifamily. Do you have the right amount of industry mix in your area? Because if, if your area is heavily dependent on one type of industry, it may not be a good idea to put an apartment complex down there. Mm -hmm. um, we take a look at the economy on a, a national and global scale if necessary. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing, for instance, like industrial tenant rep, it's very, very important to look at like the tariff situation right. and what's happening there and how much buying power do they have versus their clients have. All of this stuff mm -hmm. makes a long-term difference. And I think that's where we do differentiate ourselves because um, I think a lot of the firms out there, they do have wonderful information and wonderful people too but at the end of the day what I always say is that everybody has the same data it comes down to the analyst mm -hmm. and so we think that we do that very very well so is there I'm just kind of curious as a sure. follow-up um, as far as the trends particularly mm -hmm. in DFW right now it right. seems like to me that every time I see like a new development going up it's always like mixed use it is yeah that's a, a very popular <laughs> Type. Right. Mm -hmm. So what are, I mean, just out of curiosity, what are some of the unique challenges when it comes to analyzing one of those products? Because you have, I mean, projects, because you have not only the, the multifamily, but then you have you know, the commercial piece of it as well. Right. right, and it's different types of demand that you're looking at. So you're looking at, a, at residential demand on the multifamily uh, mm -hmm. portion of that, and then you're looking at daytime population and traffic in the area for retail, and then mm -hmm. also office. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, commercial real estate follows a pattern. Industry, rooftops, retail. Mm -hmm. That's always how the development goes. And when you have mixed use, you're kind of combining all of that together mm -hmm. into one big bang. But typically, you have to have those in very established areas. Mixed use doesn't work if you put it way out in, in BFE, it just, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to have heavy daytime population. You've got to have enough industry and diversified industry to support that. Mm -hmm. And then the people will come and they will fill up those mixed use. And then that in turn creates demand for other retail, mm -hmm. other offices around it. So um, I guess an additional follow-up. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, we recently had, um, I'm a member of the Rotary Club of Park Cities. And okay. um, so we get, um, we get a lot of interesting speakers and programs sure. that come to our club. So recently we've had two different programs. One of them was um, the head person at DART. Okay. All right. And talking about all <laughs> wow. of, you know, all of those kind of things going on and how they plan their projects, which are obviously very long tail. Um, but then we also had somebody talking about um, autonomous vehicles mm -hmm. and, you know, that whole trend as far as commuting and things like that goes. And I know especially here, like Richardson, that whole development in Richardson, like around the, you know, the city dark, line. Yeah, city line. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, that's still kind of exploding now. I drove by there just the other day and there's a whole new like office building, but they have all that mixed use and stuff like that. We so. actually live just two minutes south <clears throat> of that development. Mm -hmm. And that's very interesting. That, when you're, the guy that DART was, was there from DART, mm -hmm. I guarantee you he did what's called a journey to work study. That's mm -hmm. very interesting. So mm -hmm. the Census Bureau kind of looks at commuting patterns and what you're talking about there is called a transit-oriented development, TOD, and mm -hmm. that's well known in our industry. And that is a very highly specialized type development. So if we were doing analytics for something like that, it would definitely include commuting patterns, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and current uh, trends as far as, you know, you can look at different things like how long are people on the freeway um, in certain sections of the freeway, mm -hmm. which is very interesting because that tells you a lot. And it shows you where these little office corridors and pockets are, schools, 
those type things, um, it all affects our daily mm -hmm. living patterns. All right. Somebody's having a good time. I guess so. <laughs> Sorry about that if we're hearing right. always, noise on the uh, Always on interesting the Adventure X. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's right. a good uh, good segue because yeah. I, I, you know, um, I know that you guys, uh, as, as we do, um, you strive to really develop a lot of strategic partnerships yes. with other people where that allow you to bring more value to your clients. So I think we're going to we're going to take a short break here. Mm -hmm. And then when we come back on the other side of that, I'd like to kind of talk about how how you do that and what type of people that you're, you know, that, that you have now or maybe that you're looking for. Um, or maybe we can, you know, maybe a viewer even might be might be watching and uh, want to reach out to you guys. So absolutely. Um, so we, we are going to take a short break to recognize our sponsors for today's program. But before we do that, um, as you may have heard before, uh, we have a partnership with a local artist representative, David Call, uh, who has been kind enough to provide us with artwork that we have in our studio on a weekly basis where we can feature a local artist. So today's artwork that you see behind us is by Rob Denton. He's a local Dallas artist. And the name of the artwork is called Nail for Eichmann. Uh, it is uh, kind of a, a very spot, sparse and somber uh, piece that was inspired uh, by the movie um, Operation Finale. If you haven't seen that, it's an awesome movie. Uh, but this is called Nail for Eichmann. And um, so I think it's a great piece. Uh, it makes you think about a lot of different things. And um, so if you're interested in learning more about Rob Denton, or wanting to get in, uh, or get in contact with David Call. He represents a lot of really great local Dallas artists that do a lot of really great work. Um, so that's our featured artist and piece of artwork for this week. Now we're gonna go to commercial break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the VX Factor Live Profiles in Entrepreneurship. Again, we're with Teresa Casper Tibbet with New Star Real Estate Strategies. So, right before we uh, took a break, mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about uh, key uh, strategic partners mm -hmm. and how valuable those are. So, I know that you have a lot of strategic partners, um, do. you know, that, that help you with different aspects of your business specialist and, you know, in their own areas. How important is that to, to New Star and how you bring value to your clients? Well, to us, it's, it's vital mm -hmm. because we really are not interested in just providing one service to our clients. If we have, for instance, you know, um, a dance studio. We're, we're actually working with a dance studio right mm -hmm. now. So if that dance studio comes to us and says, hey, you know, I really, 
I've been working on this for you know 15 years. This is my dream. I want to make this successful. We are going to leverage those strategic partnerships to support that person's business as well. So we're not just gonna find you a space, we're gonna make sure that you're gonna be successful in that space. So we will bring to bear, you know, small business administration, we'll bring small uh, small business banking to you, insurance, whatever it is that you need to kind of get your business started, whether it's a franchise attorney, whomever it is. Um, we want all of our clients to not just find the, the best real estate for them, but to be successful mm -hmm. and to be able to stay there for a long time. Right. It's, uh, I don't know, you know, if you have any competition <laughs> in, in that regard, but to me, I mean, and I, I, you know, met with and, and met a lot of different people in commercial real estate and providing services for commercial real estate. And I've never really heard anybody describe their business that way. So. Well, it's, and there, there are a lot of wonderful people in our industry, um, but it is very easy because the work is so difficult. I mean, you're doing more work for a 2,000 square foot client than you're doing for a 100,000 square foot client because small businesses need more handholding, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of brokers, what happens is they kind of get mired in that day to day and they just don't have time to think about that. Mm -hmm. But we make sure that we keep a, a a client base that is this the right size so that we can do those things mm -hmm. for our clients I mean we'll, we'll turn assignments away if we feel like it's going to take away from what we're doing with our existing business and sometimes that's making some very hard decisions mm -hmm. right right so um, we're both members yes here at Venture X uh, Dallas by the Galleria. Um, that's how we met. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and right. we've and we've had a lot of great discussions about you know opportunities for our companies to Absolutely. to uh, partner together and to yeah. provide services. And so um, I think another one of the really unique things about New Star is you really look at the at the marketing side yes. of things as well. Um, and you actually opened our eyes to an opportunity to, to maybe think about what we do in a little bit of a different way so it would be uh, more appealing and uh, bring more value to the commercial real estate industry. Um, so just kind of briefly, how important is the marketing piece of sure. a project and what should people be thinking about when they're when they're looking at you know a project and, and how to make it successful in that regard? Well, if you are an owner of property or a developer even, um, marketing is integral mm -hmm. to what you're going to be doing. And my partner and I both have very extensive marketing backgrounds. We have graphic design backgrounds, uh, branding, all of that. I mean, because we did that for some of these larger commercial real estate firms. Mm -hmm. um, so that is kind of, that's our home. That's where we grew up. Mm -hmm. So marketing has always been critical in our business. And yes, like the things that you guys do uh, at Sync Lab, I mean, that, that's, that is the new wave for property owners because commercial real estate technology is advancing very quickly. I mean, this industry has been incredibly disrupted. I know that's a very popular term, right. <laughs> but it has been disrupted over the last five years and it's gonna continue to be so. There, I think we ran statistics on it. There are well over a billion dollars being poured into commercial real estate technology every year and venture, there are venture, venture capitalist firms who only exist to do commercial real estate technology. Mm -hmm. So property owners are gonna need things like what you guys provide and, mm -hmm. and 3D uh, modeling, uh, visualizations, and there are a lot of wonderful companies who do that. And we are trying to be smart enough to get with people like, mm -hmm. like you and your partner um, and the people that do those 3, 3D modeling, and, and we're trying to offer that to our clients mm -hmm. in the context of what we do mm -hmm. because we think that that's a natural marriage. Sure. And one of the interesting things that I thought that I think we learned from you is presenting it as um, as an asset, like an you know an upfront yes. asset that's actually part of their offering, yes. Because then it goes with the property. It's you know it's a, it's an asset just like a piece of, you know a square footage, right? You know. And like we were talking about, I think traditional property owners, and there are a lot of a lot of traditional property owners out there. Because if you think about it, the people who are owning property, particularly your private client, I mean these are a little older 
and wealthier individuals who that's their retirement plan right mm -hmm. so they're used to doing things in a traditional way mm -hmm. so they're used to paying those marketing fees as a commission to their broker okay we're having a little bit of technical <laughs> difficulty right now but it's me okay <laughs> it's sorry me, about fault. sorry about that we had uh, we had a little bit of a of a uh, technical difficulty and glitch with the uh, camera in the studio so my apologies for that maybe that's a sign <laughs> that we need I'm having a great conversation but maybe that's right. a sign that we might need to might need to wrap up our sure. uh, our conversation here um, the camera got bored. It's commercial estate. It's slavery. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. I'm interested in it. So. Well, thanks. But um, I would just encourage everyone, uh, why don't you actually tell people how to uh, reach out to you guys and get a hold of you? Absolutely. So uh, New Star Real Estate Strategies, our website is www. Do people still say that? I don't know. <laughs> .nhres.net. And all of our contact information is actually on the front page. Cell phone numbers, emails, all there. Great. Yeah. So if you know someone who's in the commercial real estate field or provides services for that industry, or you just want to connect with Teresa, and or Roro and um, yeah. and have a conversation and meet with them. I encourage you to do so. They're great. Um, Thanks, Mark. And absolutely. And thank you for joining us again today on the VX Factor Live Profiles in Entrepreneurship. And we will see you, actually we won't see you next week um, because we'll be off next week, but we'll see you the week after and have another great program for you. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.